Welcome to the first part of the tutorial on robotics. We will start off with uh, the design and the construction of the basic machine. Let us discuss what is robotics. The world robotics is a very wide uh, topic covering many fields of engineering and requiring the sound concepts in many engineering disciplines and it involves mimicking the actions of a human being and is finds its application in all aspects of our life. What a robot can mean? It can mean a lot of things starting from automatic industrial machines replacing human beings in hazardous work, maybe any auto automatic mobile sweeping machine at a home, maybe machine removing mines in, from a war field and many, many more. In almost all spheres of our life, we can replace the actions of a human being by a mobile robot. Here, we will be discussing the design and prototyping of mobile robots and the most important thing in this that the mobile robot must be able, must have the ability of controlled movement. That is to perform a certain task given to it and within some given limitations. Now, let us uh, move on to the overview of a mobile robot system that is the basic building blocks consisting building up a mobile robot. First is the locomotion system as in human beings for movement from one place to another we have legs. So, the corresponding parts of a mobile robot enabling it to move from one place to another it comes under the topic of locomotion systems. Then is the power supply system. Now, any living thing as in any living thing we need some source of energy to drive us and do the work given to us. Similarly, for robots, we need to provide it with some power supply that enables it to do its work and move from one place to another, solve some given problem etcetera. Then comes the actuators. The hands or the motor nerves of our body are our actuators by which we finally convert our task into meaningful work. So, as in robots, we have wheels or arms, grippers etcetera to convert the signals into meaningful mechanical work through the use of actuators. And next comes the sensory devices. Sensory devices enable us to know the environment, know our environment better such as we have our ears, eyes, nose, skin these are our sensory organs which enable us to know the environment we are living in but in a better way. Similarly, a robot needs some kind of sensory devices so as to inform it about what is happening around it in its surrounding in its environment. Then comes the sensory data processing unit. Whatever information the sensor gives to the robot must be processed so that its computational unit is able to decode it or understand it in a better way. So, such kind of processing is done such as some analog sensors are there, they are converted to digital form or any other form. So, in this way sensor data is processed to a different form for further interpretation and usage. Then comes the control system which is the most important part of any robot that is equivalent to our human brain that is it takes the information from the sensor data processing unit and tells the actuator what exactly it has to do. So, all the computation or the decisions that are taken are taken by the control system. Now, we will just move on to each of these systems one by one. Um, in this session, we will discuss the locomotion system and the power supply system. 
Now, what is locomotion? Locomotion is moving from one point to another. So, as the name suggests that if it is a mobile robot, it must be able to move from one place to another to do a certain job. It may move forward, backward, take turns, climb up or down and reach the target position to execute its job. Now, the concept of locomotion needs some kind of mechanism to make it move. It could be wheels, it could be legs. As wheels are wheeled systems are very easy to implement, they are the most commonly used in robotics. And as we know that motors are the best devices for conversion of electrical into energy into mechanical energy in the form of rotation. So, we will be concentrating on various kinds of motors for movement. Now, the task of designing a robot comes down to the control of these motors in the required manner, in the manner in which we need it so as to achieve our given task. Now, it is just some revision of some basic concept about power, torque and speed. Whatever actuator or a motor we use in our robot has a definite power consumption, but if the torque needed by the wheels to overcome some obstacle or climb up or some incline is more than what is provided by the motor, we need to trade off the speed to get a better torque and vice versa. If we need more speed, then we may have to trade off the torque to achieve our goal. Then what we have found that DC motors usually have very high speed of rotation that is not needed in most of the applications of robotics and they have very low torque output. So, what we do is trade off the speed to get better torque which is achieved by geared gear boxes, gear trains or pulleys and they are governed by simple laws of mechanics. Now, we will proceed to the different kinds of locomotion systems and as I have already said that we will be concentrating on wheeled locomotion systems as these are the most simple to build and use further. Among the locomotion systems, first one is the differential drive that is preferred by the beginners because of its simplicity in construction and ease of further use. Now, these are the various states of any differential drive system. You can see the leftmost diagram, the black arrows denote the direction of rotation of these drive wheels and the green arrow denotes the overall motion of the robot. In this differential drive, what we have is the left and right drives each are independent of the other and the overlap of these, the motions of these two drives decide in what mode or in what direction or speed the motor, uh, the bot goes. In the left, leftmost diagram, we see that both of the wheels are moving in the forward direction and as the green arrow shows that the robot is also moving in that direction. In the second diagram, what you see that both of the left and right wheels now move in reversed direction and the robot moves in the opposite direction. In the third one, we see that left drive is moving in the backward direction and the right hand drive is moving in the forward direction and as you can see that the robot is taking a left turn and exactly the opposite is happening in the case of the fourth state. Now, let us discuss some points about the differential drive. 
differential drive if you use it we can achieve in place rotation that is the robot can rotate in its own place without needing any extra space that is an advantage as it is able to move in clustered environments. Then in the previous slide what we have seen that we are rotating by reversing the direction of the motors, but we can achieve rotation by having different speeds for the left and right motors then we will not get in place rotation, but we may achieve curved path curved paths by altering the ratio of speeds of the left and the right motor. Now, we have seen that total of two motors are required one for the left and the right motor right, right drive each and both are responsible for translation and rotational motion. We will try to analyze some uh, pros and cons of the differential drive. First, it is very simple and easy to use. It can be constructed very quickly without much uh, design process. But there is one disadvantage of the differential drive that it is very difficult to make it move in a straight line. As we know that nothing is ideal. So, two motors manufactured in the same assembly line end up with different characteristics as well as in a differential drive each of the drives left and right mot uh, motor drives may be experiencing a different friction because the uniform uh, the surface on which the robot is moving may not be uniform. So, in that case it is very difficult to move in a straight line it will always have a tendency to bend towards some direction. This must be encountered by the use of appropriate uh, feedback control system in the case of autonomous robot and if it is a manual robot controlled by a human being then he can by seeing that it is taking a turn towards some direction by compensating by change altering the speeds of the motor can uh, make up for that. Next, we have our car type drive. This is one of the most common type of uh, drive steering mechanism available in our real world, but it is not that popular in our in the robotics applications. This we will discuss why it is not so. And this does not need uh, much of explanation. This is very similar to all cars, trucks. Uh, tricycles what you have seen that one pair of wheels maybe the rear or front wheels act as drive wheels and the other pair is rotated so as to achieve the turn of the robot. Now, here we see that this is the leftmost is the triangle uh, tricycle uh, used in auto rickshaws. Then the middle one is the scheme for cars, trucks, buses we see in day to day life and the third one in which the rear wheels are non driven and both steering and drive is provided to the front wheel that it moves in this direction as well as rotates about this axis to take make turns. Okay. Now, we will discuss some problems with the car type drive why it is not used much in the robotics. What we have seen is that in the steering mechanism if there is even a slight inaccuracy then the robot may end up at a very different place than it was meant to. And this is an non holonomic system that is the movement in the x and y axis are not independent of each other, they are related to each other in a very complex manner and thus it becomes very computationally intensive for the controller to implement this kind of a system. Now, we will discuss what are holonomic systems, a robot that can directly move, move 
in any of the given axis may be simultaneous are known as holonomic systems, but a non holonomic system is in which actuators do not directly control any one of the degree of degrees of freedom of the system, but instead the degrees of freedom are coupled together in a complex relation and is thus very difficult to control. Then we come to one of our close relatives of the differential drive system and this is used in tanks that is track machines and this has some applications in which there we require more friction or more uh, better grip over the surface on which our mobile robot is moving. Here you can see that there are multiple set of wheels on each side and each of them move with the wheels on one side of the board move with the same speed, same velocity. And so, if suppose in this example we are showing that the track system while it is turning all the left side wheels are moving forward and the right side wheels are moving backward. Now, what are the differences of this with the differential drive? It looks very similar, but there are some basic differences. Multiple drive wheels give us better traction that is we get better grip over the surface on which the robot is moving and this effect is even better even greater in track machines such as tanks. Now, there is one problem with the system that skidding causes the wheel to lose contact with the surface. Here you can see that this particular wheel while it is turning is moving perpendicular to its uh, to its direction of freedom that is in this wheel is supposed to rotate in this direction, but it is actually moving perpendicular to this and thus we are losing contact with the ground and this difference is very difficult to detect and analyze. Thus, we may end up at a different place than we were supposed to. Rest of its uh, properties and calculation of dynamics is same as the differential drive system. Then there is another system, another type of drive known as the articulated drive. In this what we have it is very close to the car type mechanism, but there is one basic difference that the body of the robot is bifurcated into two halves with a hinge in between. The forward and backward motions are determined by the wheels motion of the wheels and the turning is determined by the angle that each half makes with the other and is controlled by a linear actuator. You see we have seen that two actuators are needed one for the drive wheels and one to change the pivot angle that is the linear actuator. Now, rest of the system is very uh, working of the system is very similar to the car type mechanism and hence this too is an example of non holonomic system in which the both degrees of freedom that the robot has is related to each other in a complex fashion and may be difficult for the uh, controller to pro uh, properly guide it through some path. Then comes one of the most difficult systems to design, but the easiest among the drive systems to use that is the synchronous drive. What is the synchronous drive? What we have in a synchronous drive is all the wheels are always parallel to each other. Now, when turning the wheels rotate a certain degree with respect to the orientation of the robot and they continue to move in that the robot continues to move in the direction in which the wheels point. But one thing that has to be observed is that the orientation of the board that the 
body of the robot keeps looking at the same direction it can move sideways or at any given heading but it continues to look in the same direction as it has started now there are certain advantages by uh, using the synchronous drive that is the translation that is forward and backward motion of the robot is controlled by a single set of motor and is independent of the turning and the turning is solely controlled by the orientation of the wheel with respect to the wheel or wheels with respect to the robot body and as all the wheels are parallel to each other thus the orientation of the robot remains the same but the robot when starts moving in a different heading uh, given by the direction of the wheel this system is like quite complex in designing but usage of this system for an robot is very simple and there is not much of difficulty in designing a controller for such a system then comes one of the most unique drives of the locomotion system that is the pivot drive it is different from any other type of drive we have discussed so far the wheels of a pivot drive provide for forward and backward motion and when we want it to turn what we do is lower a platform onto the ground here we can see and by this we lift off the body of the robot above the ground and make it turn by rotating the body over this drive shaft about this drive shaft to a desired heading and whenever when we have achieved that direction we just lower the robot body pick up the platform and start moving in that direction you can see that the wheels are driven by a motor for translation motion in straight line so this system can achieve perfectly straight line motion as well as when it rotates it can perform in place rotations that is it does not need any space to turn it can turn on its own position this system can guarantee perfect straight line motion as well as accurate in place turns so where very accurate odometry is required we can use this system there are some issues with the pivot drive the system designing is not simple it quite complex a uh, still more complex eliminates the use of three motors the wheels and the platform rotation are coupled to a single motor when we are going for translation motion the platform is above ground so we don't have any problem with it rotating and when we want to turn the wheels are above ground so both can be driven by a sing single motor turn by turn there is one disadvantage with this system that it can take only in place turns if we need it to move in a certain curve we may not be able to achieve it so that is the end of the discussion of pivot drive the next comes the dual differential drive dual differential drive aims at keeping the advantages of the differential drive over the other drive and eliminate trying to eliminate the disadvantages with or problems with the differential drive the major problem with the differential drive is inability to make it move in a perfect straight line so what we do is do a certain arrangement of unique arrangement of gears to achieve this when we are moving trying to move the bot in a straight line the green colored gear as you can see is not in contact with any of the yellow or blue uh, gears instead this these two gears are coupled together and hence both have the same speed and it achieves straight line motion when we wish to make it this robot turn we force this gear in between the yellow and the blue gears 
and uh, by forcing this there develops a gap between these two years and these this link gets delinked and as this is introduced the direction of rotation of the left and right uh, wheels gets reversed and it is able to take in place rotation that is all there uh, to the locomotion system now we will discuss in brief about the power supply system for any mobile robot to function to its uh, optimum potential we need a suitable power supply as we are saying that the, our robot is mobile so we need a mobile power supply that is batteries but while designing any mobile robot the weight and the energy capacity of batteries is a very essential factor to be considered for uh, better performance of the mobile robot in the next session we will discuss about uh, motors and motor drivers and concentrate on DC motors and stepper motors in detail. Thank you.